Hello, Northampton. So there's this old debate, fascinating old debate, about who really domesticated whom, us or the wild goat. You see, we live on a beautiful sunny hilltop that once was part of an infamous commune. And it's kind of fitting that I should end up there because I was always the wannabe hippie kid dreaming of commune, dreaming of back to the land. But the commune dream died hard. But we still live on there 40 years hence, growing heirloom vegetables, mentoring youth, and trying to live a good life in these crazy, crazy times. And we love goats. We love how smart and cute and productive they can be. The milk and cheese are phenomenal. And the poopy mulch, my goodness, the poopy mulch is the heartbeat of the permaculture at Laughing Dog Farm. We got our first goat for Y2K. We gathered seeds and beans in a generator, and I came home with a spotted Nubian. But we were such green farmers back then. We'd drag the goats around when we wanted to move or milk or medicate. I guess we assumed that all goats were stubborn and wild. Now our great goat taming epiphany came in 08, when the old girl baby was fading from, from age and arthritis. We had made a, made a mental note to euthanize her, but the task of culling baby got twice put off and finally abandoned. By New Year's, she was growing large. By Groundhog Day, it was obvious why. March came, and our other goats went into labor. Drupadi gave us Abhimanu and Sita. Flossie gave us Lakshmi, and Kaui, the lovely twins, Saraswati. And Panchali, of course, Panchali. And then it was baby's turn, and she went into labor and pushed valiantly for two days, but made no progress at all. Finally, gazing at my old friend in the night, the terrible truth became clear. The arthritis had twisted her skeleton so far around that those kids simply were not coming out. And the suburbs kid who always dreamed of farming steeled himself and did what had to be done. When she was dead, I opened her and out slid floppy-eared triplets, one brown, one beige, and one white. Now all baby goats are cute, but these, these, her best baby's legacy were her best work yet, Bibi, Gandhari, and Radea. Raising bottle babies in the kitchen was a total blast. But soon the spring was upon us, and it was time to re-socialize the kids to the barnyard. But as we introduced those prodigal orphans back to the barnyard, a remarkable change came over the rest of them. It was as if they had been studying the orphans all spring, getting car rides, walks, and special dispensation of all kinds. And as if they collectively decided, hey, we want some of that. We want to be tame too. And like the proverbial hundredth monkey, the entire herd spontaneously turned tame and stayed that way. Baby's orphans stayed with us for over a decade, giving us tons of, tons of delicious milk and scores of tame progeny. They taught us the critical importance of early imprinting and bonding with all of our critters, goat, rabbit, cat, dog, and maybe most notably, us humans. You see, back in 08, we thought we were rescuing pitiful orphans, but actually, in fact, they were also taming, training, and civilizing us. Who'd have thunk? Who'd have thunk we'd end up gleaning such foundational life lessons from a herd of thick-skulled, 
woolly farm animals.